Uh, sorry, ahead of time. I haven't quite got everything cool in here, right? I didn't have to read those. I'm going to do my best not to be too distracting. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of words. I'm going to be talking at you a lot. I'm going to be talking about fighting. What this class is about. It's a lot easier to just explain it by going through the class. Some of them might not make perfect sense to you. You know, questions are okay, but we got a lot to go through. So a lot of the questions will probably be answered as I go through the class, and afterwards you can kind of have a copy of this follow through and we can talk about it. I've got another paper that is a bigger version of this, also with me if anyone wants to read a little bit more about what I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is OODA loops. A lot of you guys have heard me talk about them. The OODA loop is just a way to describe your decision cycle, how you make decisions. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of use this as a way to explain fighting, think about fighting, and also talk about how we train for fighting. Again, just like footwork, the goal here is to focus on how we train for fighting and how to make sure we're doing doing training well. So that's kind of our focus, what we're trying to shoot for. We're going to do a lot of lecturing, about half lecture and half drills. And so, but I think everyone's in armor, so armor drills will be more fun, so <laughs> you guys will enjoy that. So I'm just going to kind of get into it and kind of go through this, show you guys some examples of things. I may have Pat or somebody help me out here, but... But, uh, so I'm just gonna get right into it, talk about what do I mean by OODA loop. OODA loop is describing your decision cycle. It just stands for the fact that you observe your senses and you orient your observations to decide what you think is happening. Second part, OO, then you decide what you're gonna do and then you act out your decision. Observe, orient, decide, act. This is basically a way to break down your process of making decisions. And we're gonna use this as a framework to start talking about fighting and how we think about fighting and how we how we go about fighting. So that's kind of a real run rough idea of it. So I want to illustrate it by having us all kind of have a thought experiment here. I want you to imagine that you're in a fight at a tournament, Marshall's called lay on, and your opponent starts walking towards you. So as your opponent is moving into range, you observe them as best you can. This observation is being fluid because they're moving towards you and they're moving quickly. You have to make a lightning quick observation as they move into range. Figure out what that means. All right, here, let me read. With the lightning quick observation, you must orient the movement of your opponent, what it means, what are their intentions, and how does it fit into the overall picture of the fight. So these are the types of things that you have to observe and orient very quickly as they walk into range. Um, so this is an example. Uh, uh, once you make right, a lightning quick observation, you orient it, you try to determine what everything you see means. And the next thing you have to do, based on this orientation, is make a decision and act it out. So when opponent's walking towards you, make a quick observation, and you have to figure out what it means, make a decision, act out your decision. So he comes to throw a leg shot. Very simple, right? Just walk towards me, throw a leg shot. Observe, orient, decide, act. See how fast that is? Yeah. That is your decision cycle. And uh, over the course of a fight, you're going to go through several of these loops. And you see when you're in range, just go through these loops. You might go through a dozen loops while you're in range. It might only be one or two, and then you're right back out, right? Depending on how complicated it is. Uh, if you can make faster decisions and act them out based on proper observations and orientations, you have a better chance to win the fight. Make sure everybody understands that. <laughs> you make better observations, you understand your observations better, you make better decisions, better actions, be a better fighter, you have a better chance to win. It's a super simple concept. We're gonna kind of, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about this concept. We're gonna try to hope that you understand how it applies to fighting by the end of what, of what we're doing. I'm gonna give you a couple of quick examples to try to break it down to make sure we understand it. I'm gonna talk about something we probably all have, have probably all experienced, a leg fake, a rising snap. Seem familiar to anyone? But a lot of new people fall for this shot. So we're going to think about this in the context of OODA loops. So let's say I go here, he's observing me. I go, so he observes this motion, he orients that as a leg shot, he decides to block it, acts out his block, and I change to a rising snap. So what should he have done when I changed? He should have observed the change, oriented that that was a fake and this real shot, made another decision, and acted out the block. So this is an example of if I come in and I go, I'm going to leg take him and throw that shot. I'm basically programming two decisions, and my goal is to get my opponent stuck only making one decision, 
and not being able to react to the second one. So this is an example of an OODA loop in action head to head. And this is why you want to kind of have a grasp of this because the, the answer is as the opponent is I should observe, orient, observe the leg shot, orient it, decide as I'm acting out that block, I am observing him immediately. Starting another loop. I'm starting my second loop. I observe him. I orient that it was a fake. I decide to block with the post. I act out the post block. So by practicing this concept, you can see that you can start training yourself to make faster decisions. And really the key is once you make a decision go to act it out, you immediately are observing for your next decision. Immediately. That's going to be our focus of this whole class. If you are not observing your opponent in a fight, you should be observing your opponent. Whatever you're doing, stop and find your opponent. Makes sense, right? Uh, I can't see. <laughs> you know, so you got to look for your opponent. So not only do you got to find your opponent, you want to do it safely. Kind of try to address that. And then kind of a, another example, just to show you a little bit more in-depth version, is say we're fighting and Titus notices that we do a whole bunch of, we'll throw a few fights and then I disengage and I, I drop my guard. And get out and relax. Look at him. Come in, we do a couple exchanges and I'm um, disengaged. He figures out that I'm dropping my guard when I disengage. So he's not necessarily trying to throw a shot that wins. He's trying to get me to disengage again so that he can take advantage of my dropping my guard. So this is, you know, you might have three or four passes. This is an, an example. If you run several loops, you disengage or process that information, come back in, you go through several loops, and now I'm backing out, dropping my guard. He's making another. That was my first. He's making another decision, acting out, and I'm still stuck, resetting. These are examples of why you've got to start training yourself to immediately think that I am observing my opponent. Because you will observe, figure out your observations, decide, act it out, observe. If you just focus on observing, you will always run through your loop faster. And that's part of our goal here. A couple of things I'm going to talk about is that you probably all heard some example of you can't think when you fight. Call this too hot for thought. When you're in range during a fight, little time can be spent actually orienting what's going on like once you're engaged in in the action it's just super fast you will react as you have trained it's going to be a key your conscious thought in this case is not directed towards figuring out what's going on it's just directed to action and reaction action and reaction until you have room to actually stop and think all of us have probably been guilty of a couple of things i want to show you you've heard you can't think when you fight you've heard you can't think in range what you're doing when you stop to think, you are interrupting your OODA loop. It's really pretty simple. Just like if you blind yourself, if you stop to think, you are no longer focused on observing your opponent. I've got a couple examples of me personally falling guilty. Just to illustrate this, they both were with Bobby, Sir Bobby, His Excellency Sir Robert, at fighter practice last year. And in one case, he came out and he legged me. So I'm down on my knees and he comes up over me and he throws like three or four or five shots. And I was just block them all, and then he stops throwing, he stays there, and he just does this with his sword. And so I just see his hand move up, I just throw a hammer right in the face. Never even saw the shot. Boom, hammer right in the face. He was looking right at me. Didn't even see it. Sound familiar? <laughs> Another example is me against Bobby also. So I was fighting him, and I did this combo where I would step left, and then I could throw this wrap. And I throw it, and it almost got him. So I step back, and I'm just like, that almost got him. I'm going to do that again, but better. And I go to do it, and I get right here, and he flat snaps me right in the head. Because I got so committed to my plan to execute it, I stopped observing him, and he just went, he just moved your sword out, and he didn't think. So, sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> sure we've all seen, or even committed something similar. So this is an example that your decision cycle is what we're interrupting. So I'm trying to emphasize that OOP is occurring in the course of a fight, and our goal is to get a better grasp of our decision cycle and, and train to improve it. We can do some drills to work on that. But before we do, 